Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to another Mortal Kombat 11 video. In this episode we're going back to the lab and looking at a few more characters, you know, I've looked at most of the characters either on videos or off screen, uh, just in my spare time. There's however a few that I have not covered yet. Today we're going to be looking at Kotal Khan and man, I know a little bit about this character and all I can say is they did my boy dirty in this game. Kotal Khan was one of my favorite characters from MKX. For sure my favorite newcomer. He is just so awesome. I think they characterized him perfectly. His gameplay in X was really satisfying. He felt really punchy. He was like one of the biggest characters in the game. Just felt huge. Really like big punches with his huge sword and all that. And unfortunately they took almost all of that away. Don't get me wrong, he still has most of his moves in some form or another, but this character man is just really, really, really bad. He is absolutely bottom tier. I'm also gonna take this opportunity to go over something that quite a few people have asked me, and that is, how do I tell when I first pick up a character whether that character is actually good or not? Just so that, you know, people don't have to waste their time learning dog shit characters. Yeah, let's go over that as well, using poor Kotal as an example. So really, let's go ahead and look at his combo attacks. Most of the stuff I know about Kotal is from the story mode, you know. However, as well as what other people say. Now, he has quite a few decent strings on paper. This one is his basic punish string. Uh, it is negative 6 on block, kind of like scorpions, so that's decent. Uh, negative 6, not the best, but not the worst either. This forward 1, 2, 2, good forward advancing string, uh, nothing wrong with that, ends in an overhead knockdown, negative 16 on block. The first part is uh, negative 4, so that's good, but if you want the last hit with the overhead, you have to, you have to commit to it. Next up, we have this. It's kind of a mix-up, but not really because you can see the deviation. Uh, so you might as well, you know, start blocking low against the string and then just stand up react to the overhead in the last second. This move is negative 5, so it is safe, but the main problem with this string, both variations of it, is it starts off from a high. I'm gonna stop untagging them because I actually know most of these moves. We have standing 2. Another mix-up, kind of, it's a low. Problem with this string is it starts from a high and it is very slow. Uh, standing 2, in fact, is 9 frames on startup, so... Using this as a punish might not be the best idea. Uh, it's not even special cancelable. If you want to punish, just go for this move, the 1. It starts out much quicker. Next up, we have forward 2 and 4. This is his main string. Uh, Kotal Khan has very, very few things going for him. This string is one of the things he has going for him. Especially the first part of it. It's a mid, forward advancing, extremely long range. And, speaking of that, one of the things you are looking for when deciding whether a character is good or not, is do they have a good mid attack? Mid attacks really make or break the game. So if your character has a mid attack that is forward advancing and also happens to be safe, which this kind of is, that is a good move. Uh, just quickly, if we go over and quickly switch to Geras, uh, Geras is a prime example of this. He has uh, several forward advancing mids. This one, as you can see, uh, this is safe, although I don't know if this comes out on block. He also has, I think, yeah, back two. The back two to sort of safe. This one, the 4212, is for sure safe. So, yeah. This, like, for example, this. Forward advancing, safe mid. If we go back to Kotal, forward advancing, safe mid. That is one of the things you're looking for. This string has an ender to it, 
which ends in a low. But I'm gonna tell you, this low serves absolutely zero purpose. The reason is, the string with the low is negative 14 on block. There is no mix up here. Kotal Khan has no overheads, no overhead special moves, nothing, except the few moves that, you know, end in an overhead. I, I think this might be the only one actually. And aside from his hops, Kotal Khan has zero overheads. So the question is, why would you ever go for the low option in this string? It's, co it's completely pointless, especially since he can convert this string into a full combo. So really when you think about it, this string is 100% useless. And one of the things that defines terrible characters in this game is having completely useless unsafe strings. So yeah, never ever go for this low. There is just no purpose. If you're going for this string, you might as well see if it hits and hit confirm it. And if it does, you can go into a full combo. Now. Next up, we have back 223 and back 22 and back 223. This one has decent range and is safe on block. However, I mean, this looks good, ends in an overhead. However, the problem with this string is that this thing has a massive gap. You see, do you see how much delay there is on the last hit when he jumps up? I think. I think Geras cannot do it, but some characters can even 1-1 one, one through this string and punish it. They can definitely flawless block through this, so yeah, be very careful when using this string against an experienced opponent. Did I, did I switch off? No, I did not. So yeah, be very, very careful with this string. Still, I would say decent range, and once again, uh, it can be converted into a full combo. Finally, we have the last two strings, 3-4, uh, it's completely useless, uh, no purpose at all, and we have 4-3-4. Four, four. This one is actually useful, negative 3 on block, low starter, and it knocks away. Yeah, I would say, I would say this one is decent, this one is a decent string. So really, when we look at it, Kotal really only has two strings that stand out. There's the 434 4 and the 4243. 4 I mean sorry, the 424. He also has one more move that is very important to his arsenal. It's his forward four. Negative three uh, advancing mid the boot, the big boot. It just kicks them away. So yeah, this is a this is a decent this is a decent move. The large portion of his other strings though, the main problem with them and the second thing that really indicates if a character is terrible or not is that usually bad characters have way too many high starters. This is a high, this is a high, this is a high, high, high. This dude is higher than a stoner, I swear. So everything he does is high. So any character and any opponent who's really disrespectful, you know, they do low pokes, down ones, down fours and all that. They're going to just absolutely blast through your stuff. Shao Kahn suffers from the exact same problem, which is kind of funny that both of the Khans are like this. So yeah, exact same problem. Characters that have way too many highs and very few good mids usually suffer because this move, while being good, if you use it too much, you will get predictable with it. In terms of special moves, he has the Kotal Parry. However, it doesn't have an enhanced version anymore, as far as I'm aware. You can only delay it. So it's not as good as it used to be because the reason this move was so good in MKX is because the EX version was super quick on startup. If I record Gears doing a Ford uh, 1, you can see that unless I hold this, uh, if I just go for a parry like this, I'm gonna get hit. So you have to hold it. Uh, so there's no like reaction parrying to stuff with this parry anymore. The idea is still the same. You can buff yourself up with it and lead to some decent damage. As far as I know, there is three levels to the buff. 
if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, there is there's that move. Next up, variation. Well, actually, let's go over the uh, universal moves. We have the disc, no longer a mid. It is faster, uh, both to throw it and both in the way it travels, but it is no longer a mid. Deals much less damage, no EX version. Honestly, this change I am kind of okay with. I think Koro was a very strong character, especially before the last patch in MKX. And one of the reasons he was so good is that he had a way better projectile than a character like him should have any right having. So honestly, am I pissed that they nerfed this? Well, sort of, because I like the old one, but completely understandable from a gameplay perspective. Has a crushing blow on it if it's a punish from maximum range, which deals a metric fuck ton of damage. If you hit with that, you are in luck. You have the Zolal, Zolal Quake. Yeah, this is quote unquote Kotal Khan's one mix-up option because this quake is an unblockable so you can do something like either end the string or go for the unblockable however be very very careful with this your opponent essentially has to be asleep to actually get hit by this more than a couple of times so sure it's usable you can get a few hits in with this, catch a few people off guard, but really, especially in running a long set or fighting against someone who really knows what they're doing, it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult to get this to ever hit. Negative 29 on block, extremely unsafe <coughs> with the EX version. And the normal version can be very easily counterpoked or jumped. And finally, Kolkan, I might as well cover the God Ray because uh, it just changes by variation. So he has this version and he has a very far version. Uh, this version, yeah, you can grab people through it and it does deal a lot of damage. If the opponent is standing in it, yeah, as you can see, that is a significant amount of tick damage. And the same applies to you if uh, you heal yourself with it. The problem with the God Ray is that it's incredibly difficult to set up. So, essentially, what you have to do, uh, if I can get it, is... God damn it, my timing has apparently gone to shit. It really has. There we go. Yeah, this is the only way to set up the God Ray, to cut your combo short. However, as you can see, that was a 21% damage throw. So yeah, keep that in mind, you can basically get it off of any string if you cut it short. One thing you gotta be careful of with this though is that your opponent can roll away and get out of the corner. So what I would really recommend doing is using the God Ray in the corner. And I keep doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Do it like this, but again, you're open to wake ups and rolls and all that. So be careful with this mix up. Couple of variation specific moves. You've already seen this, the con cut, negative 13, unsafe, but launcher. Essentially, you're never going to use this outside of a combo. Uh, this is the main thing. You do something into forward one, if I can get the timing, forward one, two, into grab. Speaking of the grab, we get to Kotal's final variation specific move. This, hu hu can't even pronounce this. It's his command grab. This command grab is good. The reason it's good is it is actually a mid command grab. I didn't know there were mid command grabs in this game, but there are. I think Collector and Kotal are the two characters that have mid command grabs. Yeah, no ducking this one, unlike uh, like Kano's and all that. The reason this move is good is because Kotal can't self, self buffs and this command grab really is the one avenue to Koro's big damage. If we do... God, I cannot get the timing on that combo. There we go. Yeah. So Koro can self-buff. That combo did 292. Not that I'm buffed. 
it's going to do 322 and there is again three levels of the buff so you can rack up damage however it is difficult to you know uh, get three consistent command grabs uh, mainly because Kolo can tick off of very few things he can tick off of his down one and he can pretty much tick off of his standing one and that's about it there's of course an enhanced version of this move which does a few extra hits but that's about it another disadvantage of this command grab is that it side switches so doing this in the corner is pretty much not an option because uh, well you're throwing yourself into the corner essentially and your opponent out of it as you can see just by exploring the moveset of Koro Khan you can see what the problems are with this character way too many highs uh, no consistent way to keep himself safe no mix-up options and really nothing that stands out this game is very neutral focused that is no question and because of its neutral focus any character that breaks the neutral can disrespect the neutral immediately becomes great that is the reason why characters like scorpion uh, sub-zero gears and sonya are so incredibly powerful they can essentially just disrespect. Kotal has to pay this very patient spacing, uh, making the right reads, punishing with forward two, these types of moves. Whereas Sonya can just jump in your face and overhead low you to death with like, I don't know, like 35 to 40% damage combos. Again, things you're looking for are mids, good damage, and safety. That's what you're looking for and any sort of move that breaks neutral. Another thing that separates good characters from bad characters is their variations. This variation, this cat variation with Kotal Khan is one of the most confused variations I've ever seen in any MK game. Well, there's only been one that had variations up to now, but I don't know, they had like better balance with most variations. There were some shitty ones there, but they had better balance or like more thought out variations in MKX I feel like because I've noticed that a lot of these like self buff setup variations of characters Aaron Black has one, Kano has one, are just really really shitty so in this variation Kotal Khan gains this air pounce it's like negative uh, negative 25 on block the other one, the ground one is negative 28 so stupidly unsafe that's what you get. You get this move. Completely pointless. The reason this move is completely pointless is because this is an unsafe combo ender and this is an unsafe combo ender. So if your combo hits... Uh, okay, you can uh, side switch with this, but look at the corner carry on this. So my question is, why the hell would you ever use this? when you have this available to you. Just a very, very confused set of moves. Uh, and again, none, neither of them are combo extenders. So again, what's the point? He gains no new strings, by the way. Keeps most of his stuff. He has the standard version of the Sunbeam, which uh, redirects on him. Is there an enhanced version of this? Yes, there is. Yeah, there's this. Oh yeah, it goes on to the opponent, I remember. The problem with this move is it takes an incredible amount of time for it to be set up. He has to do like this whole song and dance with his hands. And meanwhile your opponent is basically free to do whatever. But I will say the standard version is better for self healing. And I think that's what this variation is supposed to be about. It's supposed to be like really difficult to break down his HP and kill him. Because you also have this Etsili to totem. And believe me, this is nothing like the totems from MKX's Kotal. Doesn't gain a damage buff. What you basically gain is the blood totem from MKX, which nobody used. Nobody ever used the blood totem. Essentially, the deal with this totem is you get it out. 
you deal damage to your, your opponent and you get a certain percentage of the damage you dealt back to you as HP once the totem runs out. I don't know the exact percentage, but you saw that I did 20% damage there, 21, and I got like 7% back. Now the totem has three levels. It is unlikely that you will ever get the third level because usually the totem runs out by then. And again, it's incredibly difficult to set up. Uh, the only safe ways I found is again, if you cut your sh strings short, uh, because if you do something like this and go into totem, you are free to be punished. Even if you do it at the quickest possible moment. Yeah, it takes a long time for him to recover. As I mentioned, this variation is incredibly confusing. What is supposed to be the purpose? I mean, I get that he's supposed to be like really difficult to break down, like his HP, but he has zero combos, he has no safe moves, he doesn't gain any new mix-ups, so actually dealing damage to your opponent with this variation is extremely difficult. Poor Kotal man, I cannot stress it enough. This variation is okay, at least it has combo damage. But man, they really, really fucked him up, didn't they? I mean, they got his look, the voice actor is doing a brilliant job. I love Kotal's voice actor. He, I actually like his role in the story, which, you know, the story is stupid, but... Hey, I like Kotal. And that's, again, really the shame. I like this character so much, but there is absolutely no reason to use him. Same with Shao Kahn. If you want a really big brawler type character, uh, one who actually serves his purpose, you know, just play Garrus. Uh, Garrus is pretty much doing similar things to Kotal, you know, good mids, command grab, all that, but does it about a thousand times better. Yeah, unfortunately that's just the nature of fighting games. Not all characters are made equal, but usually, you know, especially compared to uh, the last patch of MKX. You can really tell when a character is terrible. Hopefully they give him some options. I think... I don't know. If I was gonna change stuff with Kotal, I really would just make one more of his string as a mid. Like, maybe not this, but yeah, make this a mid. Why not? Make this a mid. It'll still have the gap to it. All that, but it's just... Give him something, just give him something, and I would definitely add uh, something new to his other variation. Maybe a different totem, or make one of his panther special moves safe, or just give him like a combo ability. Make this like be able to be enhanced and launch or something. Just give him something because this variation is god awful. So. This has been me checking out Kotal in the lab. I know I didn't go into this completely blind. I had some idea of what Kotal does uh, before I started this. But hopefully I've given you some ideas on what to look for when judging a character. Just to sum it up, mids, forward advancing mids, safe moves, and good damage. That's basically what you're looking for with characters. And characters who don't have these really struggle. So, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Mortal Kombat 11. I think I'm still gonna play this guy online once in a while, just to see what he can do, you know. Struggling with low tier heroes can be good to learn, like, like really learn stuff like defense and when to counter poke and all that. So, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that. Really appreciate all of you guys for all these MK videos. You keep commenting giving positive feedback, and as always, let me know what you want to see next with this game. So, thanks for watching, guys, and peace out.